Warm greetings to everyone. Today, I, Dr. Tanvi Priyam, will be presenting my scientific paper on magnetic resonance imaging changes of brain in Wilson's disease and its correlation with the clinical features. Wilson's disease is an autosomal recessive disease involving a defect of copper metabolism due to mutation of ATP7B gene on chromosome 13Q14.3. Neurologic Wilson's disease is one of the major forms of disease, and the neurologic manifestations include cognitive defect, extrapyramidal, and pyramidal features. MRI of brain is a sensitive method to evaluate the neurological involvement in these patients. The terminal involvement is most commonly noted in patients of Wilson's disease, followed by cerebral atrophy. Aims of the study were to describe the range of abnormalities in brain magnetic resonance imaging of patients with Wilson's disease having neurological manifestations and its correlation with clinical findings. And to evaluate the sensitivity of different MRI brain sequences in identifying the lesions in these patients. Methods, an observational study was conducted on 23 patients with Wilson's disease having neurological manifestations. Inclusion criteria, patients of Wilson's disease having neurological manifestations attending the neurology or general medicine outpatient department in Neelratan Sarkar Medical College and Hospital and referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis for brain MRI. The diagnosis of Wilson's disease was made based on characteristic clinical findings, presence of KF ring on slit lamp examination, low serum ceruloplasmin level, and 24 hours urinary excretion of copper more than 40 microgram per day. Exclusion criteria was set as Wilson's disease patients with incomplete clinical data or not having cranial MRI scans and patients having only hepatic manifestations. After screening the patients according to inclusion criteria, a detailed clinical history and family history was taken Thorough neurological examination was done and all the patients were screened for contraindications to MRI scan before the procedure. Then the patients underwent MRI study of brain on GE Cigna HDE 1.5 Tesla MRI scanner. The pulse sequences used were T1 sequence, T2 sequence, T2 weighted flare sequence and diffusion weighted imaging. The results of the study were as follows. A total of 23 patients of Wilson's disease having neurological manifestations were included, out of which 15 patients were male and 8 were female. The median age of patients was 15 years. The mean duration of illness was 19.2 months. Median age of onset for neurological symptoms was 12 years. Neurological symptoms were present in all patients included in the study. The most common neurological manifestation noted was oromandibular dystonia followed by tremors. Findings on MRI study of brain. MRI study of brain was abnormal in all the 23 patients. The lesions were hyperintense on T2 weighted images and in T2 flare sequences. Whereas in T1 weighted images, the lesions appeared hypointense. The commonest site of involvement noted on MRI study of brain was putamen seen in 20 patients. The other sites involved were caudate region, brain stem, globus pallidus, thalamus, cerebral cortex, subcortical white matter, and cerebellum. Cortical atrophy was present in 26% of all the patients. Among all the sequences used in MRI study of brain, T2 and T2 weighted flare sequences were found to be the most sensitive. Amongst these two sequences, lesions were, however, more prominent on the flare sequence. T1 sequence had the lowest sensitivity in revealing the abnormalities. The overall sensitivity of different sequences have been tabulated below. The following table shows site of MRI lesions in patients of Wilson's disease with neurological manifestations and the associated movement disorders. The other clinical correlations found were thalamic lesions correlated with chorioethetosis but not with dystonia and tremors. Chorioethetosis also showed correlation with lesions in globus pallidus and putamen. Number of MRI lesions correlated with age at presentation, tremors, and chorioethetosis. 
the following images are representative cranial MRI findings in the patients with Wilson's disease having neurological manifestations. Image A shows basal ganglia hyperintensity on T2 sequence. Image B shows pontine hyperintensity on T2-weighted axial image. In image C, cortical and subcortical hyperintensity on T2 sequence involving bilateral parieto-occipital region and the right temporal lobe is seen. Image D is a T1-weighted sequence showing cortical atrophy. The following are sections from MRI brain of a 15-year-old male patient with Wilson's disease having neurological manifestations. Image A shows bilateral putaminal and caudate region hyperintensities in the axial T2-weighted image. This is the flared T2-weighted image showing bilateral putaminal and caudate region hyperintensities. However, in the T1-weighted images, we do not see the lesions to be as prominent as seen in T2 and flare sequences. Hyperintensity is also noted in midbrain region in the axial T2-weighted sequence. This is the axial T2-weighted flare sequence showing the hyperintensity in the midbrain region even better than the T2-weighted image. The face of giant panda sign can be very well appreciated here. But the axial T1 weighted image at the similar uh, section doesn't show prominent hypo intensities. The following are sections from the MRI brain of a 24 year old female patient. Image A and B are T2 weighted axial images showing bilateral hyper intensities in the head of the caudate nucleus, putamen, and thalamic regions. Image C and D are axial T2-weighted flare sequence images showing bilateral hyperintensities in the similar regions as that of T2. The lesions are much more prominent on the flare sequence as compared to the T2 images. In the axial DWI image, only the right thalamic lesion can be appreciated, which showed diffusion restriction with a low ADC value. The following are axial T2-weighted flare sequence images from the MRI brain scan of a 47-year-old male patient of Wilson's disease with neurological manifestation showing hyperintensities in bilateral caudate region with diffuse enlargement of cortical sulci. Image B shows pontine hyperintensity with bilateral anterior temporal lobe atrophy. And image C shows prominent sulci and lateral ventricles, which are suggestive of brain atrophy and non-specific focal hyperintensities in the subcortical white matter, which can be seen bilaterally. The present study revealed abnormalities in the brain MRI of all patients of Wilson's disease with neurological manifestations. The sequences having highest sensitivity for the lesions were T2 and flare. Putaminal involvement was the most common. Lesions in the region of thalamus, globus pallidus, and putamen correlated with chorioethetosis. Number of MRI lesions correlated with age at presentation, tremors, and chorioethetosis. The findings of the study were similar to the larger study done by Sinha et al. Other study done by Ranjan A, Kim TJ, and Favorol B also showed similar findings. To conclude, neurological symptoms are common form of Wilson's disease manifestation. These manifestations are seen as characteristic signal intensity alterations on MRI study of brain, especially in basal ganglia region. These signal alterations can be best picked up by T2 and flare sequences and also correlate with clinical features like tremors and chorioethetosis. Therefore, MRI study of brain can be an important tool in studying the neurological involvement in patients of Wilson's disease. These are a few of the references used. Thank you very much.